Izzo embracing at a midcourt such mutual respect and admiration for one another. What a matchup we've got for you. The ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods, the showcase game of this event, Dick. Number six, Michigan State, number one, Duke. The Big Ten may be on the verge of winning this event for the second year in a row after the ACC won the first ten challenges between these two conferences. This is going to be fun. Two great coaches, as we mentioned, and two legitimate contenders to be playing in Houston at the end of the season. I'll tell you one thing. Both coaches have such respect for each other. Talking to both, all you heard were nothing but positives about each. Tom Izzo, who's the president of the NABC Coaches Association, he just went on and on about Mike Krzyzewski. And when you, Doris, and I were inside with Mike K, he, all he talked about was Tom Izzo. Duke is 6-0 on the season, including wins over Marquette and at Kansas State at the CBE Classic at a Kansas City. Michigan State is 5-1. Their only loss was to the unstoppable Kemba Walker and Connecticut out in Maui. 80 consecutive non-conference home wins. It has been over 10 years since Duke lost a non-conference home game. That's an wow. amazing streak. It's an amazing streak. They lost to St. John's. They are so tough here. I think when you look at this club and you look at the composition of their team, having them last week out in Kansas City, they're so impressed with their flexibility and their ability to go to their bench and come up with quality people. There's Darrell Summers. He's going to have to have a big game. He's been inconsistent throughout his career, was brilliant last year in a final NCAA run. Yeah. Scored almost 19 a game in the NCAA tournament a year ago. Shot clock, still plenty of time at a 15. Row the kick. Open was Summers, but an offensive foul away from the ball. A moving screen on Garrick. Sherman turns it over to Duke. Carl Hess with the call. He'll be joined by Ed Corbett and John Cal, outstanding officials here tonight for this big game. Turning over the ball has been an issue for Michigan State. 17 turnovers a game. They turn it over 17 plus here. They have no chance. Have no chance. They also are not rebounding like a Michigan State team normally does. Smith misses the three. Good block out there by Sherman. Frees up Green for the rebound. The guy with the ball, 23 Draymond Green, leads the team in assists, rebounds, blocks, and steals. What an unusual talent. As that pass goes astray and a Duke turnover. Terry Green is the best passing forward you'll see in basketball. He has great vision, great feel. Jay had said that he's a great, great teammate, probably the best teammate in all of basketball. I would agree with that. Well, last year when he was a sophomore, Tom Izzo named him a co-captain. That's how much they think of him. The seniors, Lucas and Summers, don't have the natural leadership ability to the extent that Draymond Green does. And there are those who feel this is really Draymond Green's team. Here what a matchup, Green and Singler, huh? That's a nice matchup out there. Singler can go play people on the perimeter. Look at the way he gets down defensively. Great stance, eye on the ball. Miscommunication between Green and Lucas. We've seen teams in this building so many times come in here, Dick, and whether there's an intimidation factor, whether it's the noise, teams just look out of sync when they come into Cameron sometimes. I think psychologically some of them are really beaten before they get here. Love the way Duke players catch the ball and immediately are in triple threat position. Irving dumps it down. Mason Plumley lays it in. You saw him have an incredible game against Marquette last week. Yeah, 25 and 12. See, the one difference in this club and last year, last year they had no post presence offensively. Zubek certainly was a good offensive rebounder, but he wasn't a threat to score in a low box like Plumley is. A Duke foul. So what Mike Krzyzewski said, he loved that 25 and 12, but can Mason Plumley deliver, not those numbers obviously, but deliver just consistent numbers. He has definitely taken a step forward as so many young players do, Dick, between their freshman and sophomore years. Well, you know, last year, in fairness to the kid, he had a wrist injury and surgery on his wrist. He was out for a great deal of time, missed a lot of playing fights. His brother Miles was starting. Another bad pass, and again, a couple of Spartans looking at each other as if to say, what are you doing? Three turnovers in less than two minutes committed by the Spartans. Not a good sign if you're a Michigan State fan. Irving, Malah, Plumlee, and good help there. 
by Delvon Rowe to prevent that alley-oop to Plumley. You know, Delvon Rowe's had so many injuries. You look at Tom Izzo's club, they couldn't function and work together during the summer because they had about six guys battling all kinds of surgeons. Yep. So they're just now getting whole, but of course the season starts earlier and earlier every season, it right. seems. Here's Summers off the screen and misses the shot. Rebound Kyrie Irving, one of the most talented freshmen in college basketball, immediately inheriting the starting point guard position here at Duke. He did a terrific job against the All-American at Kansas State as a special player, Jacob Pullen. Ryan Kelly has it blocked by Green. And a poor decision there. Wave off the basket. Singler was waiting all night for Green to arrive, and it's a charge. Well, Duke really does a great job of taking charges. He's in great position. There's the block shot. Now we're going to watch the block shot lead to a charge. There's Singler. I mean, he's standing right there outside that area where under the basket it would be a block. Four turnovers in two minutes and 37 seconds by Michigan State. Austin Thornton is coming to the game for Derek Sherman. Now for the Spartans. A smaller look lineup now for Michigan State. Thornton is a former walk-on. Has actually started three games this year. Wide open, Irving. Can't allow him to shoot the ball. That is one of the premier diaper dandies in America. He has lived up to every billing coming out of St. Patrick's High School in Elizabeth. First points of the night for Michigan State. Great job of ball movement, reversing that basketball. One of the reasons they turned the ball over, you got to Duke's defense as well. Another block. Lucas, a nice look ahead. Thornton trying to take it the distance. Holding the block. And missing the follow is Summers. Irving slow to get up, and it looks like he's limping a little bit after an incredible defensive play. He was battling illness earlier this week. Very sick on Monday, couldn't basically practice. A travel on Mason Plumley. I mean, both these clubs really get after it defensively. We're going to see turnovers. There's a look at Irving looking off. Got to watch right now the great defensive effort in transition. There he is with the left hand. Great timing. Irving now has limped to the bench, and sophomore Andre Dawkins, a much improved player from a year ago has checked into the lineup for Duke. Looks like maybe an ankle issue for Irving. Tell you one thing, when you can bring in a guy like Dawkins or bring in Curry, that is depth. Yeah. That is really showing the deepness of this team. They go one to 10 as good as anybody in America. Better than everybody in America. Miles Plumley in the game now along with his brother. Singler puts it up and hits it. It's a long two for Kyle Singler. Singler's so versatile. He's inside, outside. You're not going to measure him by his stats. His stats are not going to be as impressive as a lot of kids across America, but he is a flat out. Put together here to Cameron, and uh, of course, there's a lot to celebrate in this basketball program, including that national championship over Butler last year, 61 to 59 in Indianapolis. And you look at a comparison over the last 15 years or so between these two programs, two of the top maybe the top two programs in terms of what they've accomplished over the last 10 to 15 years. Well, certainly outstanding. I guess you got to factor in North Carolina winning two national yeah. titles under Roy Williams as well. But Tom Izzo's done a magnificent job. He goes six out of 12 years. And as you said earlier, I mean, there's no doubt he's a future Hall of Famer coaching against a Hall of Famer. Take a look at those banners flying high. Something tells me they're going to be adding to those four. This year? I think they're going to One of those this year. year. They got yeah. a great chance. <laughs> And the future doesn't get any darker. Not with Austin Rivers coming in. Green, left-handed layup, no. And the putback is good for Adrian Payne, a 6'10 freshman from Dayton, Ohio. Tom Izzo says he might be the most athletic big man that he has had in East Lansing. You know, he's long, lean, he can make threes. He had shoulder surgery, though, at the end of his high school year, and that's really made it tough for him yeah. in getting ready. Singler with a step-back jumper. Payne elevates for the rebound. He would be a big plus. Thornton with a step. 
Didn't touch any Duke players. Tom Izzo thought it did, but it's yet another Michigan State turnover. They're sixth. The only good thing with their turnovers, if there could be anything positive, they have not led to transition layups the other way. Tom Izzo still can't believe that a pass that didn't touch anybody went that far out of bounds. He's pleading his case with anybody who will listen to him. Now John Cal's trying to listen to him right now. Nice feed, Nolan Smith to Miles Plumley. I tell you, Nolan Smith can flat out play. You talk about the top ten in America, you better have his name in that top ten. Corey Lucius into the game now. And another basket for Adrian Payne. What a difference he's made since he's come in. That's a big lift for him, a confidence boost. Mason Plumley just knocked Payne down and takes advantage by laying it in. There was contact up on top. No one saw it. Lucius, a sophomore. It was Lucius who hit that big shot in the NCAA tournament to beat Maryland last year in the second round after Kalen Lucas had gone out with a ruptured Achilles. Can you imagine if they had Lucas through the entire tournament? The Lucius, that was a great game against the Terps. Good screen up on top. Step back off the screen. Green short on the three. Loose ball rebound comes down to Dawkins of Duke. A lot of people don't realize the screener becomes a very, very dangerous player when they step back off that screen. Pull the ball screen right up on top. Smith dribbles it off his foot. And finally, a held the ball. The arrow will keep it at this end of the floor. You know, early in the game now, they played about seven minutes, Dan. One thing that has really been a key for Michigan State is not allowing Duke to get up and down in transition. They've done a great job defensively in transition. Irving back into the game. Good sign for Duke after he rolled his ankle a few minutes ago. See, this Duke team plays much faster than the team did last yeah. year. And that guy is a big reason why. Irving, a, a great blend of size and terrific speed. You know, he has the speed, he has the size, but he has the ability to make the perimeter shot. He got beat right there. He created that layup by getting beat Irving did and made a two-on-one layup. Delvon Rowe lays it in row. They say is the healthiest he's been since he got to Michigan State. He's had three different surgeries on that right knee. Well, he's an actor, plays a Shakespeare right. play as well. Nice move, Miles Plumley. Plumley brothers really, man, have stepped up, elevated the games. He went right around Derek Nix, number 25, who just recently checked in for Michigan State. He just checked into the team, didn't play out of That's Maui. Right. So an off the court issues, and then he asked his way back onto the team when Michigan State got back to the mainland. Lucius with a deep three. Is there a better, it's not even fair to call him a backup point guard, but is there a, you look at the guards coming off the bench for both of these teams, they'd be starting just about anywhere else in America. Absolutely. I think Lucius, for example, great advantage bringing a guy off the bench like that, have him play a little bit with Lucas as well. He makes kid takes charge, number one. I mean, this kid was just in high school a few months ago. The lob. Oh, Miles Plumley, though, he gets it back. Now Lucius. Boy, Miles Plumley, very aggressive offensively so far tonight. Lucas, crowd wanted a walk. They don't get it, but we've got a foul on the Blue Devils. Uh, nothing like the Cameron Crazies. They get up for a game as well as any group in America. And, of course, when Michigan State comes to town, they're really going to get up. You're talking about two of the premier college basketball programs in America. Number one, Duke. Number six, Michigan State. And it looked like Michigan State was a little bit, I don't know if intimidated is the right word, but definitely off their game early entering Cameron Indoor Stadium. But the pace has really picked up for both teams in the last four or five minutes. Yeah, it really has. They get a little bit more rhythm. I mean, let's make, face reality. Michigan State is a talented basketball team. They didn't play really well out of Maui, even though they had the good win over Washington, who's got a good club. Lost to the Kemba Walker show and the kids <laughs> of Connecticut. How about Kemba Walker? Oh, he's been sensational. Oh, 30 points every game. Every game. He had 30 last night. They yeah. needed all of them to beat New Hampshire. That's right. At the line, Kalen Lucas. As a sophomore, the Big Ten Player of the Year, the ruptured Achilles late last season in the NCAA tournament, the preseason. Big Ten Player of the Year this year may not be quite as quick and explosive right now as he was before the injury, but he says, you know what, he's had to work on other parts of his game as his dad looks on, making the trip here 
to Durham. So once that explosiveness comes back, he thinks maybe he'll be an even better player than he was. Well, he thinks really it's allowed him to control himself and play a little bit better in a contained fashion rather than out of, you know, out of sync. And we'd like to welcome those of you who just watched Purdue defeat Virginia Tech, thereby clinching the ACC Big Ten Challenge for the Big Ten for the second year in a row after the ACC won this event the first ten years. Here at Cameron Indoor Stadium on the campus of Duke University, Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Doris Burke, and 9,314 Cameron Crazies. Duke 15, Michigan State 14 after it was a turnover fest early. Both teams have really sharpened things up offensively, Dan. Well, you know, Michigan State came in, averaging 17 turnovers a game, turned the ball over quite a bit, but now they're starting to make those threes, baby. Corey Lucius, the sophomore out of, or the junior, rather, out of Milwaukee, has given Michigan State the lead after they were really on the ropes for the first three minutes of the game. He has really played well coming off the bench. He's really like a starter, though, yeah. coming off that bench. Spacey, look at the great Spacey he has. Always 15 to 17 feet apart, make it very difficult for you to give a lot of help defensively. And a smaller lineup, three guards and Singler now playing the power forward spot. The versatility Duke has this year. Singler the miss, Mason Plumley in traffic. A clean block, what a steal by Irving. He is every bit as good as advertised and better. He was brilliant in the CBE Classic. Brilliant. He got the MVP. There's the rebound. Plumley gets it blocked. Ball's going to pop in the hands. And there's Irv. He's very strong. He gives you a long, lean body, but he's a lot stronger than what he looks. Freshman out of West Orange, New Jersey, has drawn comparisons to Jay Williams, who played here, now works with us at ESPN, and is actually in the building here tonight. And to Chris Paul. There's Jay Williams. Yeah, Jay Williams right on. Target played on a great team with Battier and James and Duhon and Dunleavy. Boozer. Boozer. Not bad, huh? That team was better <laughs> than this team. I don't care what anybody tells me. Green tries to feed it inside. Stolen away by Mason Plumley, who has really taken his game up a notch here in his sophomore season. And don't forget, there's another Plumley on the way next year. There will be three of them, Miles, Mason, and Marshall, all playing for Mike Krzyzewski next year. Marshall, a seven-footer, a guy with a future, they really feel, a true low-post player. But they got a guy coming in next year by the name of Austin Rivers. Doc son. Enough said. Austin <laughs> Rivers, enough said. How about enough said about how tough it is to come into this building and win? The Duke Blue Devils, there it is, have won 80 consecutive non-conference home games going back more than 10 years. Wouldn't Michigan State love to be the program that ends that run? That's a pretty good run. That gets you to the Hall of Fame, doesn't it? Bad. Probably get you a raise as a coach, too. Mike Krzyzewski recently surpassing 800 wins at Duke, closing it on 900 overall as Irving does it again. He is such a special talent. He has great touch. He has explosiveness. He defends. He was sensational against Jake, Jacob Pullen, who we know is an outstanding player. He pulls up, squares his body, great release. Comes out of a terrific high school, St. Patrick's and Elizabeth. Coach Boyle does a great job. They got a kid down there this year named Michael Gilchrist, who Kentucky can't wait to be in a uniform. 11 first half points for Kyrie Irving and Duke back on top by four. Well, they had the big three last year, Singler, Smith, and Shire. Shire's graduated, obviously, but Irving fitting in nicely to round out that big three. Tell you about Irving, here he is playing guys like Lucas. He played Poland. He's getting indoctrinated in the college right away. Derek Sherman with a strong rebound, and he draws the foul. That's a big area of concern. Tom telling me before the game, his front court has not played up to what they anticipated. Yep. Well, they're used to being just a great rebounding team. Year after year, the best in the Big Ten and one of the best, if not the best, in the country. Not so far this year. Nice inbounds play. Mike Keebler finds Garrick Sherman for the layup and Michigan State back within two. Well, Sherman comes right down to God. There was no communication by Duke. Singler, way short on the three. 
Same with the play back home in Portland, Oregon. Got 30, played against his young brother, EJ, yep. against Oregon last Saturday. One of the things that Duke and a number of other programs do for a for an upperclassman who's had a big time career, they reward them for staying their junior or senior years by going to play a game close to home. And Kyle and EJ got a chance to play against each other in a 27 point win for Duke over the Ducks. Dude, my school will never do that for me, man. They never <laughs> did it for me. And contact on the inside, Miles Plumley. Hey, John Cal pulling it very close. That post defense, they really are calling it close. Take a look right here, Irving. Look at the block. Irving, though, coming down on the ankle. Missed about three minutes of playing time. Then they looked at the knee as well. But he came back in, and whatever the problem was, it's gone. As he keeps filling it up. That last foul, by the way, was the third on Miles Plumley. So he has gone to the bench, and the big guys in the game right now for Duke are Mason Plumley along with Ryan Kelly. Well, they got 10 fouls to give it a post between the two Plumley brothers. Next year they'll have 15. Michigan State surviving a, a difficult first few minutes when they kept turning the ball over. Seth Curry, and a travel is called on Stephen's younger brother, the transfer from Liberty, sat out as a transfer last year. And he can really, he and Dawkins coming off the bench, two guys who can really shoot the basketball. You know the one thing I noticed, though? I think they come in and they know their time is limited, so they're trying to make things happen quickly because they know they're not going to get a whole lot of playing time. Right. And a little pressure on them, too. They know they got to perform and perform well. Sherman with a nice, strong move. He's really option number five offensively among the Michigan State starters, but that's his second field goal already. He's been number one option the last two possessions. Yep. Nice little move, gliding through the lane. Look at Singler working a post up on the inside. Sits down low in that box. Are you kidding me? Are you serious, Dan Schulman? He is flat out the best forward in America in terms of versatility. The kid understands how to play on both sides of the floor. Duke by two. Lucas now with the switch has Kelly on him. He wants some space. He wants to try to take him. Kelly's no match to stay in front of him. Sherman, the reverse. Are you serious? Where's this guy come from? Where's Sherman come from? <laughs> Sherman averaging 6.7 points per game in 20 minutes a game so far has three consecutive baskets now for the Spartans. Irving, he sees a seam, left-handed layup. What can he do? We have seen him utilize the left hand, the right hand, medium range jump shot. Lucas to Sherman. Not this time. Oh, Great nice pass. Sandwich. Oh, a little too far. Looked like a great idea. My bad. Led Irving a little bit too far. Kyrie Irving has more than half of Duke's points. 13 of their 25 Blue Devils by two. Well, Mike Krzyzewski's had such an incredible run at Duke University. Let's compare his first 15 years at Duke with the 15 years that Tom Izzo has had at Michigan State, and it shows you that as phenomenal a run as Mike Krzyzewski's had, Tom Izzo might be on a similar kind of path. Give Tom Izzo 15 more years, will he have a Mike Krzyzewski kind of resume? He's going to be in the Hall of Fame, right? Well, I don't think there's any doubt he's a Hall of Famer. You look at both guys, I think Mike Krzyzewski, to me, is the best coach of all sport right now. And I'm telling you, Tom Izzo is getting up that ladder each and every year. He's a motivator. He's a guy that can flat out put people together, and he's so highly respected respected by his peers. You know what's incredible about the run that both of these phenomenal coaches have had is the days, the era of a UCLA winning championship after championship, it's gone. I mean, there's more parity now. Kids go all over the country. There's more exposure to different programs. The fact that these two programs are as consistently good as they are year after year after year is just a tribute to the two incredible men who run those programs. Block there, boy. And then a travel on Payne. Pretty tough to block a hook shot, and they blocked that hook shot. You made a great point, Dan. What has happened? And Mike Krzyzewski, he sung the praises of ESPN as you're watching the block shot. He said, allowing all these conferences to play on television, kids realize where they can fit in, and that's why you have so many, what they like to say, surprises across America. Yet Mike Krzyzewski has won four national championships. Tom Izzo's won one, and he's been to six Final Fours in the last 12 years. He's getting closer and closer to his mentor, Robert Montgomery Knight, 29 away from becoming the all-time leader. 
874 wins right now for Mike Krzyzewski. That is fourth all-time in Division I in history. If they have a phenomenal year, he's actually got a chance to catch or pass Bob Knight this year, but more likely it'll be next season. Well, if he duplicates what he did last year, right. 35, he does 35 this year. I tell you, with the way that kid's playing, they got a shot. Is he as good as advertised? Better. I could not believe him when I saw him out in Kansas City. I heard Jay talk about him and all our guys, and I said, could he be that good? Let me tell you, you just said it, my friend. He is better. Plays with a real poise and maturity as well, on top of all of the, the talent that he's got. He's got one great thing going for him, in addition to his ability. Playing at Duke, he has some great players surrounding him. He doesn't have to be the number one guy. Summers. Michigan State really needs him to get going. Payne is fouled after the offensive rebound. Here on the inbounds play, the guy who throws the ball in, Dick, gets it right back and hits the open shot. That is one of the most dangerous guys on the floor. You would think teams would recognize that. I know coaches certainly point that out. Irving has gone to the bench. It's Nolan Smith, Andre Dawkins, and up front, single Mason Plumlee or Kelly, and yet another Michigan State turnover, their 10th. The single biggest concern Tom Izzo had about his team through their first six games of the season, turnover. 17 a game, 10 of them already here tonight. One thing about Duke, they will turn you over, but that is an absolute just a right. lack of mental uh, unforced error. Yeah. Dawkins. Rebound to Green. One thing about Michigan State, they'll challenge you on shots. You're not going to just get open looks. And they got good athleticism, good quickness. Lucius can't split the double team. Another turnover. Mason Plumley. He's a big time athlete for a guy with that size. All oh, the Cameron Graces are jumping with joy. They love it. Tell you, Singlet is one tough dude, man. He is so tenacious. What is it? He's had more than 200 stitches since he came to Durham. Open on the wing for Perry. And the rebound finally down to Payne, who, in spite of a couple of turnovers, is giving Michigan State some very good minutes, especially for a true freshman in this kind of an environment. Especially a kid that's really been battling some injuries with that shoulder surgery. He is going to be a fine player. Long and lean. I'll tell you, Corey Lucius is not scared at all, is he? He is, and we talked about it earlier, you can't call him a backup point guard. He'd be starting just about anywhere else in America. Hard foul takes Nolan Smith to the court. They got guys that are really attackers. You watch Nolan Smith attacking the basket. Well, Dick, the biggest problem for Michigan State, turning the ball over and just feeding into the hands of the Blue Devils. They can't turn it over there and give the easy layup in transition. Up, up, and away, baby. Duke by three. Carl, thank you wow. very much. Really appreciate that. Wow, baseball. You're going to be in a booth on Sunday. Couldn't happen to a better guy. But thank let me you. tell you this, my friend. You better get me in a booth. I want to get in a booth with you. I know I, baseball. I, you know what? I thought, and, and I'm, I'm so excited, going to be working with Oral Hershiser and Bobby Valentine. I thought your name might show up as oh, one of the candidates well. to be in the Sunday night booth. You, I know you love baseball. Well, V and V, Valentine of Vital. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we come down to uh, to do a Rays game, I know you'll come up to the booth then, right? Well, congratulations, Thank man. You. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy and a more talented guy. Thank you, it's been a thrill working with you. Just can I have a loan, please? <laughs> Sherman, nice, nice pass. pass, and Thornton has it rejected. Sherman has really played well. He's attacked the basket for three goals. It's been a nice little pass there on the post. Well, I'll tell you, at both ends, you better attack the basket with some strength because both baskets are being defended uh, very well. Block shots and everything being contested. See, I really think the next three minutes are vital to Michigan State. You're going to see the block shot right here. Plumley comes over. Good play. Singler keeps the ball alive. These next three minutes are really important to Tom Izzo. You don't want to allow Duke to go on a spurt and go up by double digits at halftime. Michigan State in the bonus. Delvon Rowe at the line. Misses the front end. 
great article by Marlon Corsi on Delvin Rowe and about how he's acting as a Shakespeare play. Yeah, switched his major from criminal justice to theater and is acting in a, a Shakespearean play right now. He's a wrestler in a Shakespearean play as Corey Lucius knocks down another one. He's into double figures now with 10. You know, he's playing well. Summers has certainly disappeared. Last year, Summers had some big games, like against Gonzaga, and then against Cyril and Chu against Wisconsin and Purdue. They have to have consistency out of him. Tough shot by Nolan Smith. And he was brilliant. There was no question in the final four and five games. You said it earlier. Averaged about 18.8 a game, Summers. But tonight, it hasn't been Summers. It hasn't been Lucas, really. It's been Corey Lucius, the biggest reason why Michigan State's been able to stay in this game. And Sherman has helped yep. us so his pain. Lucius launches and hits. He's feeling it, man. He said, bring on the camera phrases. Bring them on. I'm just going to square my body, get a good look. Three young kids out there. Watch how these shooters square their body to the goal. Oh, what a great fake. What a triple threat. Extra this passes. Is. Dawkins. Good job by Sherman to get Mason Plumley out of the way and grab that rebound. And Michigan State can tie or take the lead. Sherman has really given them quality minutes. Lucas. Rebound Irving. Numbers for Duke. And a block is called. Kaylin Lucas called for the foul. Let's check in down courtside with Doris Burke. Dan, after practice yesterday, Mike Krzyzewski sat his team down and discussed the importance of tonight's game. And it had nothing to do with rankings or a conference challenge. He said, guys, tomorrow night is about passion. He said it's about having more pride in the name across the front of your jersey than the guy you're looking opposite. He said, guys, this is a program game. Dan? And Tom Izzo, when he looks at his program, not his current team, the overall state of his program, the continuity of the success from year to year, the first program that he wants to compare his program to to see how well they're really doing is Duke. He's always talking about Duke. The players said he's always talking about Duke. That's all we ever hear. Duke this, Duke that. We get tired of hearing about it. <laughs> but he has such respect for what they've achieved. Something else Mike Krzyzewski has said time and time again. A lot of people write their goals down, Dan. That's easy to do. But it's the commitment to make the goal a reality that separates the winner and the loser. Next draws the double team. Needs some head open. Row with a slam. Poor job doubling up by Duke. They didn't rotate off the weak side to come back and give help and take that pass away. Lack of communication. Good patience there by Knicks, too, not to panic in the double team and find the open man. Irving. Singler flies in for the rebound. Well, they had Kelly wide open underneath, but Plumley didn't see him. Kelly gives him size. People say, why is he starting? He gives him size. He gives him skills on the perimeter and it allows Plumley to go into the post. Right. Singler. Misfiring so far tonight. We go into the final minute of the half, and again, Michigan State can tie or take the lead. I'll tell you one thing, the Big Ten's going to have some fierce battles when you throw in the likes. I love that Ohio State team. Thad Motter's done a phenomenal job in Buckeye country. ESPN, the home court of College Hoops tomorrow night. It's the Big 12 Pac-10 Hardwood Series on ESPN2. A couple of great games. Arizona State taking on Baylor and then UCLA and Kansas. Both games also available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. Considering they're Kansas and considering they're fourth in the country, doesn't seem like a lot of people are talking about the Jayhawks right now. And come the middle of this month, Josh Selby's going to join the well, team. Well, Josh Selby, you know, he's going to do for them what you see Irving doing here at Duke. He's going to elevate their team to another level. I mean, they've done an amazing job. They took about a tough place to win. Go down there, look. Allen Fieldhouse yeah. trying to get that. They have the longest win streak right now in America at home. The Duke Blue Devils leading by two, 16, make it 18 points for Kyrie Irving. And for Michigan State, Corey Lucius has 13 points. He's five for five from the floor, three for three from three point range. What an outstanding performance by Lucius. You know, I thought Summers would build off what he achieved yeah. last year because he was so brilliant. Like Tom Mizzo felt the same way. Rowe and another turnover. He was up in the air. You don't want to be involved. Nice pass pass. He ate it off the pass by Irving. 
It's the Irving Show. Jason Williams bringing the best out of him. He's saying, Jason, I know you were a terrific freshman starter. He was the last point guard to start as a freshman here. 1999, Jason Williams. Michigan State holding for the last shot. Lucius a deep three. And did Mike Krzyzewski get a timeout called, but a little bit of time came off the clock before they were able to get it called. The Duke leading by four just a second ago in the first half. The Blue Devils have put together an incredible run of streaks that are all on the line tonight. They're undefeated this season and going back to last year. Remember the defending national champions, of course, they've won their last 16. They've won their last 22 at home. They've won their last 49 home games in December. And maybe the most amazing one, they've won their last 80 non-conference home games going back over 10 years. And then people will come up to you and say, why do we have to hear about Duke? Why do we have to hear about Duke? Duke this, Duke that. Well, that's why you're hearing about Duke. See those stats? Our producers, our people, our research people, those are numbers that Duke has earned. And those are numbers that other programs cannot duplicate. Now, if Michigan State can get a win here tonight and end all of those streaks, that's wow. going to be quite a moment for Tom Izzo and his program. You know, he should feel pretty good, though, about the fact that when he turned the ball over, have gotten zero out of Summers, and here they are. They're down four yep. against Duke, who really got a solid performance out of Irving. Hey, by the way, ACC, I'll tell you this right now. People better not write off North Carolina. I will guarantee you they're going to win their share of games, and Barnes eventually will be a special player. He's too talented. They have two things going for them. They coach, and they have talent. The half will come to an end. A couple of guards have dominated play here tonight. Freshman Kyrie Irving has 18 first-half points for Duke. Corey Lucius keeping Michigan State in it with 13 points of his own. An exciting first half after a sloppy beginning 38-34. Duke leading Michigan State at the break. Let's go down to Doris Burke. She's with Tom Izzo. Kyrie has gotten off in the first half. He's difficult to handle. Kyrie is difficult to handle, but any adjustments with him in the second half? Well, you know, I like the way we played if it wasn't for those goofy turnovers. We had a couple missed rebounds. Delvon struggling a little bit with the ball, but I don't mind the way we played. I think we're running them pretty good. I'm happy about that. I think we've gotten some good shots. we just done a very poor job of turning the ball over again, and that led to some baskets. Thank you, Tom. Dan. All right, Doris, thank you very much. So he likes the way they played, but they've got to figure out a way to slow down Kyrie Irving. He's got 18, Duke by four. Let's join Carl in the studio for the UPS Halftime Reports. Taff here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Duke Blue Devils, the number one team in the nation with a four-point lead on Michigan State here in this big ACC Big Ten Challenge game. And a look at the first half stats. The, the number that just jumps out at you, Dick, is the turnovers committed to by Michigan State and the points the Duke Blue Devils turned those turnovers into. Well, you 22 points off 12 turnovers, and that's certainly a big plus. On the other side, you look at Michigan State, you're minus four, and your three-star players have really been non-productive. You got Draymond Green's one for six. You look at Lucas's 0 for two. And you look at Summers' one for four. Let's check in with Doris Burke. Associate head coach Chris Collins told me they were not at all pleased with the in, ineffective communication defensively leading to Michigan State's 50% shooting when I asked him specifically about Corey Lucius he said listen our guys are not communicating on all of their cross screening action and therefore we're getting hung up and giving him open shots he said offensively a little bit more ball movement they feel like they took too many tough shots in that first half we'll see guys on both ends what adjustments they make all right, Doris, thank you, Tom. Izzo told Doris going off the court at the end of the first half, he likes the way his team is playing. If they could just hang on to the basketball, he'd be really happy. Let's see if they do a better job here in the second half. Rowe, strong move and a block. A look at the Xerox lineups here as we open the second half. And for Michigan State, Lucas and Summers in the backcourt, a very quiet first half for Summers. Rowe. Green and Garrick Sherman, who gave Michigan State some very productive minutes in the first half. Kyrie Irving, along with Nolan Smith, Kyle Singler, Mason Plumley, Ryan Kelly. Kyrie Irving on an individual basis, Dick, the biggest story in the game. The freshman has 18 points. He was absolutely sensational. He was driving, he was shooting the jump shot, he was playing on the defensive end. He has really been a star of stars early in his career. Got the MVP in that CBE Classic. 
And that features some quality players there. You look at the likes of Kansas State and Sonny Marquette. Duke 6-0, including those wins over Marquette and Kansas State, as you mentioned, Michigan State 5-1. They lost to Connecticut in the semifinals out in Maui before beating Washington in the third place game. Of course, they fell victim to Kemba Walker, like just about everybody else has when you run up against the Huskies so far this year. Kelly with a nice shot fake, and he buries the 16-footer. They really do a great job with the shot fake. For you young kids out there, I keep talking to you about it. Catch that ball, square the basket, use a little jab, fake. Lucas forcing the issue and a foul on Nolan Smith. They do a fantastic job. Watch right here now. So they kick it out. See the shot fake? Gives a little fake and allows him to get spacing. It creates open space for you as a shooter. And that's what Kelly did there. Foul number three on Nolan Smith. His teammate, Miles Plumley, picked up three fouls in the first half. Nobody from Michigan State has three fouls right now. I tell you, games like this, both these clubs will be winners. You get a true evaluation, a real barometer of where you're at, and a loss here certainly doesn't, you know, suffocate you. Lucas blocked by Irving. He's doing it all. He can do it all. He's a flat-out PTP or a prime-time performer. Smith strip. Draymond Green with a steal. Here comes Lucas. And a foul on Kelly. Lucas much more assertive so far here early in the second half. He's going to have to be assertive. If they're going to win this game, they got to get Lucas and Summers to get going scoring. You know, you had to feel for Lucas last year, rupturing his Achilles tendon in the second game of the NCAA tournament. His buddy Lucius hit the shot that got him past Maryland. Then they won two more games, got to the final four. But it took months and months of rehab before he even got back on the court. Still not 100% in terms of his quickness and explosiveness, yet he's still putting up big numbers. He's the Big Ten Player of the Week last week. They say he really worked so hard. He was doing his rehab twice a day, seven days a week. He was so intense about it to get out here and perform. You know, you see a guy like Robbie Hummel at Purdue go through a torn ACL for the second time, and you realize... You know how fragile this all is for these kids. I mean, at any moment, a knee, an Achilles tendon, you just don't know what your future is. Well, you lose a key player, and when you're really top-notch club, it can really affect you big time, especially when your dream and your goal, when you look at Duke and Michigan State, their goals are not to get into the NCAA tournament. Right. Their goal is to cut the nets down and win a national title. Mason Plumley to the line. The sophomore having another good night. Had an incredible night against Marquette in a game you did in Kansas City last week. 25 points, 12 rebounds, just a, a huge breakout night for him. Getting more of an opportunity with Zubek and Thomas gone. And as you mentioned, starting with Kelly instead of with his big brother, makes Plumley the primary inside guy. Kelly more of an outside guy at times. Look at the slam by Draymond Green. That's big news for them because Draymond was a non-factor in that first half. Irving draws the foul. You see him go coast to coast, but Draymond Green on that wing, really effective in transition. There he is. In fact, Coach Tay said, you know, people don't realize how they can really run with the basketball. They're very effective. Great angle, great jam. He's a kid that fills up that stat sheet. He really does. And so is this kid. Number 19 for Kyrie Irving. I got a funny feeling he's got a great career ahead of him. <laughs> I think there's a, a chance he may be a special player. At this and another level. <laughs> don't you think? Well, let's hold off on the other level. Uh, we don't want to let you know. See, right I, now, I didn't say when. <laughs> I'm just saying whenever. Uh, can you imagine when he hooks up? Let me tell you this. Austin Rivers yeah. is every bit what they say and more. Mike Krzyzewski told us before the game that Austin Rivers is coming to Duke next year. Doc Rivers' son, 6'5", shooting guard. Rowe can't finish. And Smith is fouled. Plays down in Orlando, right? Austin yeah. Rivers yeah, had 11, 11 threes and 46 points in a game last week. Against real good competition. I tried to recruit his dad. I couldn't get him. Al McGuire was too good, man, to get him. But I'll flat out tell you this. His father couldn't shoot like Austin. Yeah. That's for sure, Doc. Well, Austin Rivers and Kyrie Irving are good buddies. They have played together. Let me tell you this, he's not bad either. This could be a little danger time for Michigan State. This could be a little danger time, my friends. Nolan Smith's pretty good player himself. Big time performer. 
when you get a combination of experience with Singler and Nolan Smith, factor in a freshman with the talents of Irving, you got a chance to win. That I jumper by Smith has given Duke its largest lead of the game. One thing about time is those clubs, they get better and better as the season progresses. Smith again. He says, anything my buddy Irving can do, I can match it. Think about this. They have never won, they have never won a pre-conference tournament like the NIT, a major tournament. Say this, a big, big donor for the V Foundation, Rocky Ross, lost his life. He will be buried tomorrow. I want to send my sympathy to his family. He was a phenomenal fan of sports in Michigan and loved Tom Izzo. Yeah, nice, loved very Tom nice Izzo. man. Huge fan, you're right. You know him well. Yep, very nice man. And, and, and by the way, the women's Jimmy V, Monday night, the men's Jimmy V, which you and I are going to do, is Tuesday night at Madison Square Garden. Memphis against Kansas, and then Michigan State against Syracuse. A couple of great games, great basketball, and again, an opportunity to raise a lot more money for the V Foundation. Should be a great night. Got Jim Beheim certainly against right there. Tom Izzo will be a heck of a matchup. Syracuse got a good basketball team. Miles Plumley with a block. Michigan State gets it back. Shot clock did not reset. Sherman inside lays it in. Sherman doing a great job in a post for now. That's his fourth conversion. Yep. If they can only find a way to get points out of Summers. Plumley from just inside the arc. And the rebound down to the Spartans. Duke got out to a 10-point lead. Now Michigan State's made two baskets in a row. They've got the ball back. And a reach-in foul on a Singler. Saturday afternoon at 3.15 Eastern Time. It's a rematch of the NCAA Championship game. Butler and Duke coming your way here on the home court of College Hoops. And then at 5.15 Eastern, number 21, Illinois. Number 24, Gonzaga. All available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. I know that Illinois team really impresses you. Oh, they really do. You know, people say, well, North Carolina got beat. Let me tell you this. There are many clubs that are going to go to Champaign and beat Illinois. And I agree with Jay. This club is going to get better and better, North Carolina. They just got too much talent. They're too well coached. And Harrison Barnes, he needs that one breakout game. He needs that one confidence builder to get him to get going and really play to his potential. Andre Dawkins, the foul. You saw Singler sitting down with his third. Three Duke Blue Devils have three fouls here four minutes into the second half. But the one thing they have going for them, they got people on a bench that can come up and really produce. Summers got to get going. They got to get him some shots. Lucius carried them in the first half. He just drew the foul. If it's Miles Plumley, it's his fourth. And it is. Welcome back to Duke. This is continuing coverage of the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Duke leading Michigan State by six, but in the overall challenge, the Big Ten's already won it. They're up 6-3 to three with this and one other game, Maryland and Penn State, still to come. Second year in a row, the Big Ten wins the challenge after the ACC had won 10 in a row. The Big Ten is in a groove right now. Many feel this is the best conference in the country. Well, you look at the depth of the conference. Look at Northwestern. They beat Georgia Tech by 20, and Georgia Tech played Syracuse really tough. Beat Texas El Paso. I mean, I think this could be the year Northwestern finally gets into the tournament. Scherner is a good player. So is the kid Crawford. Really has improved. I look for them to really challenge. It will be tough to beat at home. And at the top, in no particular order, with Michigan State, Ohio State, Illinois, Purdue. I mean, you're talking about, well, what about Wisconsin. Strength. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Never automatic for anyone, especially if you got to go play them down there in Cole. They were really tough at home. Look at the beating they gave North Carolina State. But in fairness, North Carolina State's playing without a legitimate inside all-conference player on Tracy Smith. Meanwhile, since the Tom Izzo timeout a couple of minutes ago, Michigan State's got on a 6-0 run. Duke's gotten in some foul trouble, and this is a four-point game. Bowen Smith really feels it right now. You can see he's trying to be a little bit more assertive offensively. Mason Plumley and a foul on Draymond Green. He had that big game, as we talked about last week. You can see his confidence level. When he gets the ball, he's playing with confidence. He knows he's arrived. 
so often a player makes that big leap between the freshman year and the sophomore year and that may be the case with the Mason Plumley, maybe the case with Andre Dawkins as well. You know what I think so many kids that come out of high school we expect instant ability and we want instant success and if they don't get it we start talking about well he can't play. I heard some people making some comments about Harrison Barnes. I could not believe. I said are they serious? Are they for real? This kid is too talented. He will be special before it's said and done. Plumley at the line. Misses the second as we check in with Doris. Well, one thing Mason Plumley has done differently this year is, see, uh, there's a prime example, Dan. He doesn't let one mistake turn into another. He gets the free throw. He goes hard after the board. The one place, and Dick, you talked about his confidence. That's a major part of what's gone on this year. The one place he does lack confidence, you just saw it at the free throw line. He'll have to get better there, guys. You know, Doris, you made a great point. A lot of athletes, if they have a bad night, they multiply it, and it becomes three, four, five nights. The Great ones have a way of tucking it away and starting from scratch the next night out. Left that one a little bit short, and the rebound down to Sherman, who continues to give Michigan State some very good minutes in the middle. He has been really better than we anticipated here tonight. I'm still waiting for the guy who's MVP of their club to the Final Four last year to make a play. Has he been out there, Summers? He's on a winter break right he now. He has not done much at all. Ryan Kelly picks up the foul. Sherman will go back to the line. So Sherman's been terrific. Lucius has been terrific. But the top three scores for Michigan State coming into the game tonight, Lucas, Summers, and Green combined, they average almost 47 points per game. They got 12 tonight. That's four for 16. Take the least common denominator. Four to four is one. Four to 16 is four. That's 25%. Math teacher back in Jersey? Uh, yes, yeah, sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Missed them both badly. Hot potato. Thornton's got it. I want a working violation. We'll run on floor, but he never had true possession. There's your guy. Summers has arrived. He heard about it. He heard us. He's too talented, too good. Average 18 point a game was really a vital factor in them going to the final four. They need his jump shot. Hard to wow. believe with the talent they have. You and you look at a team like San Antonio just playing unbelievable basketball right now. Got the best record in the NBA. What will be a press conference tomorrow? Maybe fire the coach. I mean, we can fire <laughs> think, the coach. I think Phil's got a little job got security. Little security. <laughs> I think Mike Krzyzewski's got a little job security, no matter what happens here tonight. I think Tom Izzo's got a little job security. I'm gonna do with the ACC is gonna be pretty tough. I was impressed with them out in New York, Maryland. Even though they lost those games, they played Pittsburgh really tough. Yep. Illinois, they got some good athletes. Plumley couldn't finish on a great lob attempt there from Kyrie Irving. Couldn't get the catch to the jam. Michigan State, they're not going away, man. They reflect their coach. Competitors. Still looking for Lucas or Green or Summers to really get going. Because that turnover, turnovers hurt them all year. Free throw lines hurt them this year, and they haven't rebounded. Smith, no. Green comes down with a Michigan State has coughed it up now Turn over 20 again. times. 20 turnovers. Oh, that's intentional. That's intentional. Without a doubt. Derek Nix turning it over and then compounding his mistake with an intentional foul. Well, you put him on a line for two. They get possession of the basketball. I mean, he could turn around and be a five-point play. You rather than let him just get the layup. You got to play with your mind. You got to think. You got to think. Well, Nix is a young man, as you mentioned, did not accompany the team to Maui and asked his way back onto the team when they got back. He's worked hard to lose a lot of weight over the last couple of years. He's a talented young man, but he has not been productive like they need him to be. As the, the free throw line continues to be a problem as well. And you can see that Tom Izzo is not happy. they got to get Derek Sherman to rest. Sherman's given him some good minutes, but Nix hasn't done much. Payne had a few good minutes in the middle of the first half, but hasn't done much here in the second half. Did you watch any of that game last night? Georgetown and Missouri? Game of the year. Oh, what game a of game. The year so that far. was absolutely an incredible game. Washington Freeman, something else. Another missed free throw. And when you talk about the great point guards in America, and we've talked about Lucas and Irving and Pullen and some of the others, Chris Wright at Georgetown. Wright's terrific. I mean, he yeah. is a, he's a sensational Well, guy. the big three they have, Wright, when you talk about Freeman and Clark, when yeah. he goes three big threes. And let me tell you this, Missouri's going to win their share of games. Yeah. 
Ben Minning ticks in and that lift from Bowers. They got some players, Michael Henderson. So Smith misses both free throws, but Duke has the ball because of the intentional foul. Nix has gone to the bench and Sherman's back in. Singler got it. So we get so two they miss and they get a three. That hurts big time. That hurts big time. A possession like that can change the complexion of the game. Singler now just three for 12, but what a big shot that was to extend the lead to nine. There's the run for Duke over the last three minutes. Green, Sherman switches hands, misses the left-handed layup. What a great look by Green. I can see why Digger Phelps loves him. Irving draws the foul. You know, the one thing as kids, learn how to play the game. Catch the ball and be ready to shoot. Look, look at the position. Look right here. He's in position to shoot the ball. His body's squared. He finally gets an open look. Boy, Green made a great pass and he a did. good score. I think Jay said it, that Green is the ultimate teammate. You would love to have him play with you because he's always going to give the ball up. He's unselfish. He's going to rebound, do all the intangibles it takes to win. 22nd point of the night for Kyrie Irving. 18 of them were in the first half. And Duke continues to extend the lead. It's now an 8-0 run for the Blue Devils. He's got that gift. A lot of guys have quickness. They can get to the goal, but then they can't shoot the perimeter shot. So you play off them. This kid, you have a tough time guarding him because he can go by it, and if you play bad, they shoot the open jump. Imagine the possibility of him and Austin Rivers in the same backcourt together next year. They got another great kid coming in quick. Lucas scoops it up and in. That's his game. Attack the goal, attack the rim. That's why he became the player of the year in the Big Ten two years ago. Shot fake, Singler for three. Why did he get free? We talked about it earlier. The shot fake. Catch the ball, square the body, throw the fake, and it gives you spacing. You need space to shoot the ball, and that gets you space. And it's giving them a little space on the scoreboard right now, this 12-2 run. Well, two Singler threes. That's six points. Two times three is six. Lucius driving. Tough shot. What a night for him. They got a nice combo back there though, with Lucius and Lucas. They can really attack you off the bounce. 17 for Corey Lucius. Give them any kind of gap or scene. They're going to attack it. Singley's in one of those rolls right now. What is turnover scene? Watch this kid pass the ball. Great vision. Great vision. Great look. Mr. Green and Digger screams in the studio, that's my guy, that's my guy. <laughs> and again, think about the unusual talent Green is leading Michigan State in assists, blocks, rebounds, and steals. That's not bad. Dawkins, nice pass. Smith open. Another lesson for you young kids. Give the ball to an open teammate. Reverse the ball. They reverse the ball. They get an open look. That one extra pass. And they're dancing and jumping, jibbling the Cameron Crazies with their 1,500 SATs. Great ball reversal. See, Dan said he reversed the ball. Now, if you don't even reverse the microphone to me once in oh, a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN, the home court of college hoops tomorrow night. It's the Big 12 Pac-10 Hardwood Series on ESPN2. Arizona State taking on Baylor. And then it's UCLA and Kansas. Both games available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone as well. Let's check in again with Doris Burke with an update on Nolan Smith. Well, Dick Vitale, you have often talked over the years about how opponents always give Duke their best shot, never more so than when they're defending national champion. When Nolan Smith was asked about the mindset it will take if they're going to absorb all of that kind of hit, he said, we're ready to be in that spot and go after it like our opponent is the defending national champion. We want to be the attacker, not be attacked. Guys? I'll tell you one thing Mike Krzyzewski has told me, and he shared obviously with his team, he said, hey, our coaching staff is going to give you our maximum to be the best that you can be. Now we need you to commit to give us your maximum. And if we do that, I think, he said, I think 
we're going to enjoy the year. They got a chance to be a pretty good team. We've reached the under eight media timeout here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. A number one Duke, number six Michigan State of the Blue Devils with a 10 point lead. Hi, Carl. Thank you very much. Here, Duke leading Michigan State by 10, a 7 to 59 to go in this game. As we check out Dickie B's headlines from college basketball around the country, and what's been a very entertaining first few weeks of the college basketball season. Headline number one, the Big East. Six tournaments have already been won by a Big East team, Dick. Well, you take a look at the Big East right there. I'm going to tell you, they're going to be better. And don't write off the Tar Heels. I'm going to tell you, Gonzaga or Washington struggle a little bit early. Those teams are too talented. Ain't no mountain high enough, my friend. You're, you're not, you're not singing now, are you? No, no, okay. San Diego State, <laughs> BYU, UNLV, very good club. Beat Wisconsin, Virginia Tech. Rebels have moved into the top 25. Mark Kruger's done a heck of a job since arriving out there in the desert. Can Michigan State hang on to the basketball and make some open shots to make one more run at the Blue Devils? Hurt big time because their stars have not responded. Thornton off to Lucas. Wide open corner three. That's a star. Coming up a little bit late right now, but that was a big three. Gets it down to seven. He and Summers, though, you look at the numbers, have really been quiet. But it down to the Duke defense. I mean, I don't think people can credit enough the way they defend. A foul on Lucas. Now and that'll send Smith to the line. Last time he was there was Brick City. This both. Number three on Kalen Lucas of the players on the floor, Lucas, Rowe, and Sherman. Each with three for Michigan State. Miles Plumley has four for Duke. Duke has not been able to get out and transition for that pandan running game. That's the one area that time is those kids have done a good job as Smith converts the first. And with the, the addition of Irving and Seth Curry, more a little more backcourt, a little less inside for Duke. And Mike Krzyzewski says, we're going to revamp the way that we play this year because of Kyrie Irving. They're going to be much more of a running team this year than they were last year. You know, Shire was a solid player, but he didn't possess the speed and quickness, but he was a terrific, I mean, a terrific college player. Oh, nice paint. Should have taken that ball right to the goal for a reverse layup. And Stan Lucius. Short on the three, long rebound, and a Michigan State gets a fresh 35. They're still right in this game, Dick. Well, they're down eight. Certainly a big possession right now because if you go the other way, it could be a four-point swing. Rowe. Plenty of time. Nice pass inside. Rowe kicks it back out. Lucas, yes, it's a long two for Kalen Lucas. I tell you, guys, utilizing that shot fake well on both clubs. That is teaching. That's by no accident. That's coaching every day, put it in practice. New team. They've done a better job staying in front of Irving and not allowing him to attack that basket. Dawkins wide open. Mason Plumley with the board. Zubek was terrific last year doing that. Coming up with yeah. the offensive rebound, kicking it back for open threes to Shire. Who would have guessed he would be one of the real heroes for Duke on their way to the winning the national championship? One of the real unsung stars of that team. Well, again, certainly they starting lineup in February. They were 20 and 4 at the time. But after that, they became a dominant team. Shot clock at 8. Irving. No chance. We got a foul, though. And Delvon Rowe knocking down Mason Plumley, the fourth on Rowe, and Plumley shaking up. He's certainly a player they can't afford to lose because if there's one area they're a little thin is down in that post area. I mean, on the perimeter, they got guys that can step in. They don't have many people to step in down there in that low block. Eight points, nine rebounds for the sophomore. His big brother helps him off the court as we get another look. Now you can see Rowe actually inadvertently stepped on his foot. And it looks like Plumley's foot kind of got caught underneath and he rolled his ankle. Well, you think about what Mike Krzyzewski has achieved in the last two years. Unbelievable. NCAA championship, 
World Championship, the Olympics. So I think Tom Izzo can pick anybody on the floor to shoot. Because Plumley is injured, so he chose Nolan Smith. Of course, he has struggled. He's really struggled tonight. Generally yeah. a pretty good free yeah. throw shooter, 70% coming into the game, but just three of six tonight and missed his last two. See, that's the rule right now, the visiting coach in that situation. Can pick anybody on the floor on that injured player. The reason that was put in was a couple of years ago to eliminate guys faking injuries. Right. Tom Izzo just made three substitutions, bringing back in Adrian Payne, Draymond Green and Darrell Summers. They need Summers to drain one of those threes that he's capable of doing. Smith makes them both. Seniors having a big second half. He picked the wrong guy right there. He picked them based on the fact that he struggled early. Missed three out of four prior to that. Saturday afternoon at 3.15 Eastern time. It's a rematch of the national championship game. It'll be Duke taking on Butler. Right here on ESPN, that came up in New Jersey. Then at 5.15 Eastern, number 21, Illinois, number 24, Gonzaga. Both games available on ESPN HD and available online at ESPN3.com. Also available on your phone, ESPN, the home court of college hoops. I don't think any college basketball fan is ever going to forget the national championship game in Indianapolis between Duke and Butler. Oh, it was such a dramatic moment. You think about what Butler achieved. Got the beautiful book out now by David Woods, Underdogs, all about that dramatic run. There's a look at the numbers. What about Haywood with that dramatic shot at the end, now playing in the NBA? They're right in their own city. Butler, unbelievable what they achieved. Struggling a little bit out of the gate right now, but you expect that. They lost some key players. But the one thing that that league is getting better as you look at the ball from that game, Cleveland State in that league right now is 8 and 0. Detroit's going to be pretty good in that league. I mean, that league is not. John lacron has got some good players to finish in that league. Summers can't convert on the alley oop. And Payne is fouled on the follow. They set that play up in a timeout. Missed that dunk. They set that up in a timeout. Had the jam off the screen up on top. A little bit far. A little tough right there. Didn't have a good angle. This is an area that's been really a problem for Michigan State this year. Wow. Don't show that. Don't show that. Really hurt the kid. He said, I'm going to show those ESPN graphic guys. I can make my free throw. That makes him now three for eight on the season. And Miles Plumley back into the game. Mason is still on the bench. Kelly comes out. And as we mentioned off the uh, near the top of the show, Tom Izzo says he might be the most athletic big man he has had in 16 years in East Lansing. But he's got to get stronger, become more comfortable in the offense. But he's got all the tools. Yeah, you can't teach that size. You can't teach the length he has. He's very skilled, too. What we're hearing is Mason Plumley could return tonight. As the tough layup goes for Irving. He returns, I'll tell you that. What a jet he is to the basket. I mean, he and Gilchrist together last year could have played on the collegiate level and beat a lot of college back points. Dick, he's got 25 points. Doesn't shock me after seeing him last week. Duke has won 80 consecutive non-conference home games going back better than 10 years. And he's looking to make that pass green. Summers, they need it, and they get it. They need him to get going, really get going. I'll tell you this. I may be making a statement a little bit too much here, but I think Irving, he's the best young talent I have seen thus far this year. And I haven't seen them all, but he's the best young one I've seen watching on TV and games that I've covered. Plays within the team as well. Sure does. He really does. You don't see him taking a lot of bad shots. Michigan State ball. He's Kyle Singler, pretty good at all the regular shots you have to have to play at Duke University. He's not bad at the trick shots either, as you can see. The big Vitale shot. It was awesome, baby, with the capital A. Hey, Kyle, you think you're cool, baby? Try this wall, American. Give me the rock. Try that, baby. Try that. Yeah. 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 Well, 
I'm a believer. I don't see any reason <laughs> to think that you didn't make that shot. <laughs> well, your son just asked me, Ben said right here, did you really make that? <laughs> There's the lob they've been looking for from Summers, and it's down to five. That's the guy they need to get going. They're going to win a lot of games. The Breslin, the Izzo, will be rocking and rolling. Had that set play. That's why Mr. Izzo has been a national coach of the year four times. He'll ultimately be in the Hall of Fame in Kansas City and the one out in Springfield, Mass. Nearing the final three minutes, Michigan State's been playing catch-up the entire second half. They've got it down to five. Shot clock down to five. Well, Duke likes to spread the court right now, get great spacing. Oh. There it is. Oh, but what a great job defensively, but the offensive rebound. Now, the way Tom Izzo is yelling for a shot clock violation, wondering if it expired before Singer put up the follow for the basket. Boy, what a battle for the basketball. It's a travel called on Duke. Mike Krzyzewski's screaming. He's screaming for a foul. Take another look at that last basket. Both coaches are unhappy right now. Mike Krzyzewski with a travel call. Tom Izzo with the lack of a shot clock violation. Watch the clock go down. Ball does not hit the rim. Basket. Did he get it off just in time? We had a bad angle when we said way up here, I'll tell you. It was close. Lucas. Tough one. Trying to cuff that ball going down the lane. He should have dumped it off for a layup on the inside. Delvon Rowe called for the foul. We mentioned that Duke has brought into this game tonight a number of truly remarkable streaks overall they've won 16 games in a row going back to last year 22 straight at home 49 straight home games in December and 80 straight non-conference home games going back to a loss against St. John's back in 2000. I'll tell you one thing with the crowd the inspiration they get they play so hard so intense. Row fouls out. And Mason Plumley, who left with an injury earlier, back in the game and at the free throw line right now. You know, Rowe, unfortunately, has never been able to be the player I think people thought because he's had so many major surgeries. The poor kid's had a number of knee surgeries. Free throw shooting becomes big late in the game. You better be able to convert. And Plumley does. A little pump of the fist after the struggles he's had at the line earlier tonight. He's had it for a double-double. Got it right now. Ten he points, ten right. rebounds. Big possession. Big possession. Can't come up empty here down nine with two on a clock. They run some really structured sets. Look at this kid play. Lucius misses. Summers follows. Summers has really awakened, but a little bit late in the game. I mean, he really has given them zilch. A seven-point lead for Duke. We talked about it right off the top of the show. You go back 10, 12, 15 years. These two programs have had as much success as any programs in America. You look at what Duke has done, including a couple of national championships. Tom Izzo has won a national title and has been to six Final Fours in the last 12 years in an era of parody in, in college basketball where there are no dynasties. It's truly incredible what these two coaches have done. Well, you know, really, also what they're all about, These both these guys give back. They give back. They're great humanitarians. They love their community. I ran into a professor yesterday at breakfast by the name of Chase at Michigan State. 40 years, he said, I've been a professor there in the agriculture area. He said, let me tell you, Tom Izzo is Mr. MSU. He turned down that incredible offer. I asked him before the game, and he regrets the it. The Cavaliers, said, yeah. So are you yeah. kidding me? He said, I have found a home. Love it where I'm at. He said to the, the good folks of East Lansing, I'm a lifer. I'm staying here forever. And boy, wasn't that the best news they've heard in a while. Well, the same thing here at Duke when the Lakers came calling for us. Look at this kid handle the ball. Are you serious? Are you serious? Come on now. How good is this kid? Jason Williams, I know you're watching. What do you think, my friend? Oh, he is special. I want to hear Jay and Hubert and Digger talk about it. Look at Jason say, wow, he's from Jersey. He said, he's from Jersey like I am. Are you kidding? 
There's Jay Williams back when he played for Duke back in his day, won a national championship with the Blue Devils back in 2001, but even he's got to be so impressed with Kyrie Irving here tonight. Jay Williams was so strong, so physical, would have been one heck of an NBA player had he not had that injury, that accident. Look at Irving right now. Look at him changing the legs. Look at him great control of the ball and the body. Control of the ball, the body. And you know, finishes with the left hand. He could use either hand. He's ambidextrous. An eight-point game with a minute 38 to go. The one thing about Tom is those club. They will learn from this. They will absolutely utilize it as a learning experience if they don't come back and win this game. You guys spread the court so well. This is where Duke does a phenomenal job of getting incredible spacing and take advantage of their dribbling ability and the attack ability of their guards. Free throws coming for Irving. They attack you off the bounce. You give help. Lay up. Lay up to the big guys. You're right. Is it going to be fun? Austin Rivers and his kid. I'm not exaggerating. I've seen Austin Rivers play on television. I've watched a little bit of him up on the ES where I live, out in Florida. Let me tell you, he is the real deal. Payne back into the game for Sherman now for Michigan State. 27 points for Kyrie Irving. He's shown the ability to shoot, to drive, to pass, to finish with both hands. You know what he showed me the ability? Two big marquee games against two big time marquee veteran guards, yeah. Pullen and Lucas, and he has been the winner. He's been the best player on the court in both of those games. Lucas gets around him and lays it in. He said, hey, freshman, try to check me here. He said, try to check me here. It took him a little one on one. He got a little lackadaisical defensively. Now it doesn't get uh, uh, much easier for Duke. No break coming on NCAA championship rematch coming up Saturday. Duke, of course, some of the faces have changed, but many of the faces and players return for this game up in New Jersey on Saturday afternoon that we'll have for you on ESPN. Jay Billis and Doris Burke will be with me. Compare this Duke team now to last year's national champs. Well, you know, I'll be watching you guys. Well, let me tell you this. This Duke team, 1-10, is better. It's much more talented, more flexibility. One of the key reasons, post play out of Plumlee and the incredible quickness and the explosiveness of Irving Doris. What do you think, Doris? Well, what's so extraordinary to me, Dick, is the drastic transformation in the style of play by the Duke Blue Devils. Let's remember that you guys talked about John Shire at 18 points per game last year, also led the team in assists. But because he was not a great guy at making the guys around him better, they were so much more methodical. This is much more vintage Duke of the national championships of past years, Dick. No question they're better. I still say this, though. They are nowhere near the capable of the clubs in 91 and 92 uh, with late Hill and Hurley, and certainly not as good as the 2001 that lined up with Dunleavy, Boozer, Battier, James, and Mr. Williams, and Chris Dillon. Not a bad team. All kinds of ball handlers in the game right now for Duke. Singler and four guards, and if they can just knock down some free throws, they'll go to 7-0 on the season. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN. Including a big night in the NBA. The Lakers lose again. Yes, LeBron is going back to Cleveland tomorrow night. The Heaterman Cleveland tomorrow. Big Ben. Mr. Roethlisberger is on the man. All that coming up next on SportsCenter. You no, know, I spoke about LeBron on the Mike and Mike show. Those guys do a terrific job. And he asked me my take. And my take is very simply, and I'm not an NBA expert like all the guys we have and the Pete Vesties of the world and all the people that know the NBA. But I will tell you this. I really think he's played passively. I don't think he's taking command. I think he's trying to fit in with everybody. And he has not been the LeBron James that we saw in a Cavalier uniform. And I also feel the three guys, they're rock stars. They go around as rock stars. They'll win their 55 games, their 60 games, but they're not going to win a national championship until they commit on the defensive end. 
Thornton back into the game for Michigan State. Singler makes one of two. It's an eight-point lead with a minute three to go. Some ball pressure here by Irving to slow down Lucas just a bit. He's got to stay in front of him. He went right by him before he went by him again. See, he can't allow himself to get beat like that. He's going to lock up and stay in front of him. Irving comes out of the pack. He got fouled right there. It's been the Irving night. And I'm not saying Julius Irving either. There he is showing the range as a jump shooter. And now he's going to show what he can shoot the medium range jumper. And there he does really well. Attack the rim with the left hand. And now he does it with the right hand. He said, what else you want me to do? I want to see him stay in front of Lucas. How about knock down some free throws? He's 11 out of 13 tonight. I think he's earned a scholarship tonight. <laughs> what do you think? think he's earned a scholarship to do? I think so. 30 points. He is absolutely special. Great kid, too. If you talk to him. Great attitude. Green for three. You gotta get it out of Irving's hands if you can, but a foul will send the freshman to the line again. I still like this Michigan State team. They played them tough here to submit it. Obviously, it's one of the toughest places to play. And you know, maybe one of the reasons, as you said earlier, Dick, they get better and better through the year every year is because of the rugged schedule that they play every year. They've already been to Maui, so they played Connecticut and Washington out there, Duke tonight. They got Syracuse coming up, they've got Texas coming up, and then of course. The Big Ten is going to be just a, as difficult a schedule as there will be in any conference this year. Yeah, I think the Big Ten, when it's all said and that'll be between the Big Ten and the Big East as to one of the best conferences. Why I say the Big East? Because I think teams are a lot better than what we thought. Notre Dame, Connecticut, Louisville, Marquette. I mean, those teams are a lot better than what we all anticipate. I think everybody talked about Syracuse, Pittsburgh, and Villanova, but no one talked about all those clubs. What about Tennessee beating them? They're good. Villanova, very They're good. good. I mean, one thing about Bruce Perry, he can flat out coach and get his kids to play as a unit. Green for three. Got another one. It's a five-point game. That Draymond Green, he is one heck of a player. Nearly a turnover. He can shoot the three. He handles the ball. A look now at Duke's upcoming schedule. We told you they're going to play Butler on Saturday. We'll have that game for you on ESPN, 3.15 Eastern time. Then Bradley, St. Louis. They'll play Greensboro just before New Year's and then on into the ACC. Ouch. Well, I can say there's an ouch. Ouch. Let me tell you, the ACC this year is not vintage ACC. I think when you look there, and that's going to certainly play a role in helping North Carolina as well, there are a lot of really subpar teams from teams in the past. When you look at the makeup early, now unless they miraculously get better, but you look at the Wake Forests, the Clemsons, the Georgia Techs, they just don't have the personnel that they've had in the past. By the way, Duke later on in the season will step out of conference twice. They'll go to St. John's and they'll also play Temple. So two very good tests out of conference late in the season for Duke. Green with the follow. He's putting up some big numbers here late in the game. He's really stepped it up. There's the foul. Steve Lavin's done a heck of a job with that St. John's program. I look for them. We talked about Northwestern getting in a dance. You know, St. John's hasn't been in for years, and I think it's going to happen this year. Nine seconds to go. Michigan State not conceding yet, but quickly running out of time. 82 to 77. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN. A look at a busy night in the NBA, including another Lakers loss. A roundup of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Ben Roethlisberger continues to heal. It'll be Scott Van Pelt and Steve Levy bringing you Sports Center tonight as soon as this game is done. That's a pretty good backcourt. I think Scott Van Pelt's a front court, a front court guy. He's a front court guy now. He's, he's, he's a big. He's a big guard. He's a guard. Well, he's a big guard who can handle the ball. He's got me a cloud nine, but his turf's playing so well tonight. Tell you this, you can talk about Michigan State basketball, but the one name immediately stands out is Irvin Magic Johnson. John Heathcote, 1979. That game supposedly, according to many, really skyrocketed. Started basketball, both against Magic. Raymond Green with another putback. Really got college basketball 
to really yeah. explode on the national horizon. And the rest is history, huh? Right, so let's get bigger and bigger and bigger. Everywhere you go, the enthusiasm, the energy. I love it, man. Duke will extend its non-conference home winning streak to 81. With an 84 to 79 win here tonight, Kyrie Irving has got a right to be pumped up. The freshman had an incredible night, 31 points, leading Duke to the victory. The Big Ten wins the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports Center is next. So, as you well know, this is a rematch.